On July 22nd, during the Battle of Ponte Plateau, a black Doberman named Kurt was scouting at the front line when he discovered the Japanese defense line outpost. The battle that ensued was one of battalion strength involving approximately 800 Marines and countless hundreds of Japanese soldiers. Had Kurt not alerted the Marines to the Japanese presence, it is estimated that over 250 American Marines would have perished. Kurt was hit by mortar fire that opened a gaping wound in his neck, exposing his spinal cord. He was rushed to the War Dog Hospital, where Dr. Putney operated on him in an all-out effort to patch up an extensive wound. That night in his foxhole, Putney held the mortally wounded Kurt in his arms, cushioning him from the jumping earth as machine gun fire and rifle fire erupted around them. Kurt's wounds were too severe, and at 3 a.m. on July 23, 1944, as machine gun fire cracked overhead, Kurt stopped breathing. By this time, Dr. Putney was totally exhausted and emotionally drained from watching his patient slowly die. He rested his head on Kurt's chest and fell asleep. Kurt thus became the first war dog casualty on Guam territory. The Marine Provost Marshal Major Tonus awakened Dr. Putney in the morning, expressing his sympathies to the young veterinarian and attempting to console him over the loss of Kurt. The grieving veterinarian asked the Major what he should do with the body. His reply was, Kurt died like a Marine, and he deserved to be buried as a Marine. That is how Kurt, the first war dog casualty on Guam soil, and the other 23 dogs, Welcome back. We are going to be talking today about the history of the war dogs on Guam and, in fact, about the dogs that we have here today. And the paragraph that I read at the opening of the show was written by my guest, Captain Joseph P. Comet uh, from the U.S. Navy. Uh, welcome to Man Land and Sea, and thank you for that uh, beautiful introduction that I was able to read. Thank you, Mike. It's a pleasure for me to be here, and I want to thank uh, Channel 12 Public Television for the opportunity to tell Guam a story which not too many of you know about, a story of the heroism of these dogs of World War II, the uh, role that they played in helping to liberate the island from Japanese occupation. I also want to acquaint you with the unique War Dog Cemetery, which has had several locations over the past 53 years, but which is now down at the Naval Station on our historical trail. We'll be visiting that later in the segment. But to tell this story properly, I need to go back about 53 years uh, to the early battles of World War II when the uh, Americans realized that the battles with the Japanese in these South Pacific Islands were going to be unique types of warfare. Unlike the standard warfare of European theater, this was going to be battles in jungles where there would be hideouts, there would be ambushes, there would be caves, that'd be a rough terrain. Uh, this was going to be a very difficult type of battle for the Marines. And they soon realized this in the Battle of Guadalcanal in 1942. Following huge losses of American Marines in Guadalcanal, they decided that uh, they would be able to use the unique talents and innate abilities of dogs to augment the Marines and to warn them for encroaching ambushes and attacks by the Japanese in these uh, caves and, uh, and uh, uh, in these island settings. So they established a war dog boot camp at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina in early 1943. Uh, this boot camp accepted, well, I believe there were about 1,430 uh, dogs of various descriptions, mostly Doberman pincers, German shepherds, uh, a few uh, Heinz 52 variety mutts, uh, a, a collie or two, and, uh, and uh, a, a black Labrador. These dogs were donated by their families to the war effort. They were donated and they were inducted into the Marine Corps, given honorary titles of Private Lance Corporal. And uh, there was an agreement with these families that should the dogs survive combat, they would be returned. And many indeed did return to their families at the end of the war. But the heroism of these dogs are stories that are tearjerkers, stories that will really be of great interest to you as, as we develop them. And I'm so glad I'm able to talk to you about it. But anyway, the boot camp uh, in 1943 at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, 
uh, train these dogs uh, as you would train a, uh, a human recruit. They went into recruit training and, of course, got their physical examinations and were, uh, were evaluated for their ability to, uh, their intelligence, their ability to obey commands, um, uh, their ability to adapt to wartime training. Many people that uh, donated their dogs felt that the vicious dog, the one that was uncontrollable, would be a great fighter in the jungles, but that was untrue. What we needed in the war effort were uh, Dobermans and German Shepherds, other types of dogs that were intelligent, that uh, were controllable, that were smart. And so they went through a screening process when they went into boot camp, and those that uh, survived then started a 12-week training course at Camp Lejeune. I believe there were over 250 that flunked out of the boot camp in the first few days of training. But uh, they first went through six weeks of basic training where they learned silent commands because in a jungle uh, battlefield you certainly can't be barking out orders to your dogs. Uh, so they went through silent uh, command basic training. And then if they survived that first six weeks, they were beginning to be exposed to actual combat situations where they had exploding ammunition going on around them and, um, and fires and smoke and what have you. Following 12 weeks at Camp Pendleton, at uh, Camp Lejeune, they were then shipped across country for advanced uh, field training at Camp uh, Pendleton, California, where they were married up with actual uh, human marine battalions that began to uh, train for the war in the Pacific. So this was quite a, an investment in time and, and, and energy to get these dogs ready for uh, battle. They had their first successful campaign in Bougainville in New Guinea in 1943. And uh, because of the great success there and the uh, numbers of casualties that they were able to prevent, they went on and fought very successfully here in Guam, in Saipan during mop-up mop operations for uh, the Saipan uh, evolution. They then went to Peleliu for the battle there, and they served in Iwo Jima and finally in Okinawa. Uh, so they have a, a wonderful history uh, of uh, service to the Marine Corps. Uh, while on Guam, they led over 550 patrols through the jungles and uh, are responsible for saving thousands and thousands of American Marines' lives. Uh, now I need to start telling you the story of their young veterinarian by the name of Lieutenant William Putney who was right out of uh, uh, his veterinary training school at Auburn University and was assigned to the war dog uh, boot camp at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Uh, Dr. Putney uh, began training these war dogs for service in the South Pacific and was eventually assigned as the commanding officer of the 3rd War Dog Platoon. Uh, he was, uh, took his dogs and his handlers and uh, went on to Bougainville, where he joined the great flotilla uh, headed by Fleet Admiral Chester Nimitz. And this flotilla of nearly 1,000 ships and uh, the Marines and, of course, our war dogs headed into uh, the waters of Saipan and Guam and fought in the Marianas Turkey shoot and then uh, with the Battle of Saipan and the Battle of Guam. On the 21st of uh, July, 1944, with the first wave of Marines that came ashore at the uh, landing beach in Assen, uh, Dr. Putney and his fellow uh, 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 commanding officer, uh, Lieutenant Taylor of the 2nd War Dog Platoon, landed uh, on the beaches of Assen and began uh, scouting for the Marines up the hills of, uh, Fonte, towards Fonte Plateau through the Assen battlefield to Fonte Plateau. Uh, in the course of the battle to liberate Guam, 24 war dogs and three war dog handlers were killed. And uh, you open this segment with the story of the first war dog that was killed, the war dog Kurt. We have photographs of Kurt that I'm sure you're going to be showing our audience. Um, Kurt was the first to die. And you also told the story of how the war dogs uh, cemetery came into existence. The, the Marines were so delighted with these dogs and their performance that they considered them fellow Marines, and they did bury them with the Marines on the uh, banks of the Assen River uh, in a rice paddy. 
1946, after the war was over, uh, the American human marines